On the build show today, we're going to be talking about exterior insulation. Coming to you from my house, this is my real rebuild project where we've made a bunch of videos. Catch up on those before you watch this if you haven't seen them. But on today's video, we're going to be getting into all the details on how to do exterior insulation, what are the benefits, how to do the details correctly to make sure that you've got a nice, thick blanket of insulation on the outside of your house. Today's video is sponsored by the Atlas Polyiso Insulation. Let's get going. All right, guys, welcome back to my house. As you can see, we've made some great progress on the outside of the house. I think the last video that I posted was either Monopoly framing or the rooftop insulation. And man, it is looking amazing around here. Now, we just started about a week ago on our wall insulation, and you can see we're pretty much done at this point. We just have a little bit to fill in in a few places. We're using Atlas's Polyiso insulation. This is foil face, but they do make a bunch of different flavors and varieties on this. Now this foil facing you're seeing on the outside here has a couple of benefits for us. Number one, a radiant barrier. This is gonna radiate the sun's energy back on us. In fact, I even have a couple scrap pieces over here we're using as a bounce uh, on this video because it's bouncing that sun's rays. So it's helping us on energy efficiency beyond just insulation. But remember, whenever we've got a foil face and we need an air gap in front of that for that to actually function correctly, that's why you saw me on the roof not worrying about using this because I was making a sandwich. On the walls, however, I'm going to be putting a 1x4 batten on each one of the studs, and then I'm going to add my James Hardy siding on top of that, which means I'm going to have three quarters of an airspace in front of this foil facing. So when the sun gets through there, it's going to hit that, and because of that air gap, it's going to radiate the sun's radiant energy through. Now, if you remember from high school science class, we've got conduction, convection, and radiation. The radiant barrier helps radiate out, and then the two inches of polyiso on here are gonna help with conduction and convection. Now, polyiso is a very high R value. That's one of its big selling points. A lot of R value per inch, and in fact, this two inch panel is R13. So on my entire outside of my house, I've got R11.4. Now, this is an older neighborhood. I'm rebuilding this house. This is a 1970s house. All my neighborhood uh, is two by four construction. And it's typical in two by four construction to see bats in that cavity at either R13 or a high density bat of R15. The problem is with standard insulation in the walls, you've got all the studs in the way. And every time you hit a stud, you have a much lower amount of insulation. Studs in wood in general are roughly R1 per inch, which means on a two by four stud, I've only got around R4 at my stud. So even if I have R13 or R15 in that cavity, the effective R value is much, much less. And in fact, the studs, the wood framing, typically accounts for 20 or 25% of the wall surface area. So on the other hand, when I put this thick blanket on the outside of the house, like look at this gable here, it's going from foundation all the way to my ridge. I've got a continuous R13 everywhere. The only time I'm breaking that is when I hit a window. And sh stay tuned for a future video on how I install my windows with this thick foam. But you'll see I used a wood buck around my window to make the install easier. That's the only place that I'm gonna have any thermal bridging really is at that buck. Other than that, this entire wall here in the gable is gonna have a really thick blanket of insulation. So now when I put those R15 bats in on the inside, plus this R11, I've got an effective R value of the whole wall close to R20. That's fantastic. Even two by six framing with R21 bats isn't really R21 because of all that thermal bridging. This is a little bit nerdy, but hang on for me for one second. The other benefit to this, especially if, in your, if you're in a northern climate, is this is gonna prevent condensation from possibly happening on the inside. Now, I've been a builder for 25 years, and probably for the first 10 years of my career, we used poly for a vapor barrier on the inside, plastic basically on the inside. What you were doing was, in a cooling dominated climate, you were putting that poly on the warm side of the wall, which typically is the winter time, because if there's humidity in the house, you didn't want that humidity, that moisture from migrating through your wall in touching the backside of your sheathing, whether it was OSB or plywood, we didn't want that happening because in the winter time, that's a cold surface. It could actually condense on there and cause some degradation. Now that doesn't happen every day, but it can happen certainly in certain times of the year in certain households that have more humidity. So it's something we need to take caution on. 
So by using exterior insulation, especially in the north, you're going to prevent that condensation. Now me down in the south here where it's hot and humid, what I'm doing is I'm keeping that heat out of my house. I'm really trying to make sure when I air condition my house, and I spend a lot of money on my current house for air conditioning on a monthly basis, this new house, I didn't want that. I wanted to make sure my energy bills were much, much lower. I'm going to be talking in the future about how I'm going to rate this house to be passive house rated. So stay tuned for those future videos. But what that basically means is I wanted a really airtight, really well insulated house. And this is contributing to that big time. Okay, now let's talk about the details. Sorry, I nerded out on the science for a minute there. A couple things that I want to show you on this. When we get to the base of the wall, we didn't want that foam just hanging out on the bottom. So we did a detail that Steve Basic, my architect friend up in Boston, uh, helped me develop where he's done this a bunch of times before. You use a two by two, basically a rip of a uh, two by four, and we're ripping at the thickness of the foam. So it's inch and a half by two inches thick. And we're screwing that into the base uh, plate of the house all the way around the house. And then on this case, we're using zip sheathing as my water and uh, air bear in the house. So we're putting a piece of big zip tape, six inch tape, up the zip sheathing over top of the two by two and down the face. That way I don't have to worry about bugs or insects coming up and I've got some protection on the base of that insulation so nothing happens to get it ragged. You also notice that we put some bug screen on here. This is just a uh, cheap aluminum bug screen. I bought it in 25 foot rolls. I staple that up to the sheathing and what I'm going to do eventually is when my 1x4 battens come, I'm going to flap this up and uh, we're going to staple this onto my batten so that I've got some bug protection into that cavity. You also notice that we have some cap fasteners to install this. These are from Roden House. They're made for it. They work really, really well. We're just going to pop that fastener on the wall. And then I actually got a cool gun from uh, Roden House as well, if I can show you that right here. Uh, that's this guy. Actually, let's do one. How about we do this live for a second? This is kind of a cool little device. So first off, to put that on, we're just going to pop it on. Now you notice we don't have a lot of these on right now because ultimately all we're doing is just holding that foam on temporarily until we actually install those one by fours. Because when those one by fours go on, they're going to go on with them some thick uh, Spax screws. So this is kind of cool. This is a cordless device. We can set the depth in here on this Senko. Uh, it takes a little 18 volt battery. And boy, we've gone a long time. I'm not sure we even had to charge it once. You also see that it's got a cap on here that's going to accept different Roden House fasteners. And all we're going to do is place it on there, and pop it in, and it screws it right on. Isn't that cool? Super easy. Now on the seams, on the joints here, we're going to tape it. Now you could use this as your WRB, uh, meaning this would be your primary weather and air barrier. I'm not a fan of that method. I'd rather use the zip sheathing. Uh, as my primary bear and just make the insulation do what it's intended for, which is insulation. Um, but they've got a bunch of tapes on their website. I'll put a link in the description below uh, that are specifically made for this. This is a foil face one. I like the foil face because now I'm getting a radiant barrier effect there too. And all we're going to do is just roll that tape out, put a little pressure on it, we're good to go. And that's going to stick tenaciously. Now you notice we haven't taped all the seams yet. We're coming back to do that. You also notice as we walk around the house, I'll leave that right there. We left a chunk off of the insulation at the window and door heads. Other than that, we've pretty much gone all the way up the wall. Stay tuned for my future video. I'm going to show you how to waterproof and air seal this window install. Uh, and then after that head flashing goes on, then we'll finish that out. Now, one thing you're going to notice on this house, if you watch my Monopoly framing, we're going basically from foundation to ridge no breaks in the insulation. That's a really big deal. So that my attic is not going to be a traditional vented attic. All of my attic is going to be part of the air conditioned envelope on the house. Part of the reason why I'm doing that is because I've got a slab on grade foundation uh, at this project. We're in the south. I've got rock underneath me here and I don't need to worry about a frost line. So all of my attic space is really my mechanical space. Now check this out. This is really cool. See that foam right there on that wall? That's my second story wall. I've got kids' bedrooms beyond there. And then I've got this little shed roof right here from my garage that lands on that. That foam actually got put on that wall first and ran continuous. And then we ran the rafters. Uh, and so the way you do that is the wall foam goes on first. 
And then we lagged that ledger board on with some long Spax screws. That's a green headed screw right there. And we've, we verified with the engineer the thickness on that. But basically all this framing out here is outboard of that insulation. So my insulation truly goes from my foundation, from the lowest point in the house, all the way to the ridge continuously. Now you can actually see that over here in the front of the house. Let's see if we can walk around and show you. You may have seen my other video that I posted on this. This is my through wall flashing at my brick area. And now we can see this foam right here coming up the wall and check that out. There's my two inches of foam that's, or pardon me, my two layers, I should say, of two inch foam that's on my roof deck. My wall is going continuous all the way up to my roof. So now my wall insulation, when it dies at the roof, it's dying right into my roof insulation. Here, we can see right here, this is a good spot for it. You also notice the, the guys when they installed it, they cut the wall insulation at an angle where it hits the roof and they got it nice and tight up there. Man, that looks good. The guys did a great job. Now here's the other gable. This is the uh, master side of the house. And again, we, as we look up there here, actually this is a great spot to show it right here. We've got, see that little angle right there where the roof is? Boy, they did a nice job cutting that. We've got rafter tails that were built on top of the roof and they poked the roof foam out by at least two inches. It's sticking beyond that. So then we can butt my wall foam right into that. Again, we stopped at these heads right here because we're just starting to put the uh, head flashing on these windows. Uh, and I, I just made a huge video on how to do this exact install. So stay tuned for that. That's pretty much it, guys. The details are really not that hard. And like I said, it only took us a couple days uh, of install to do a 2,800 square foot house plus some big gable areas. So we're only talking uh, a little bit of labor to install this. I'd highly recommend you check out some pricing from these guys. It's gonna vary, of course. Uh, from what I've seen, most of these wall insulations like this are gonna run uh, plus or minus a dollar a square foot-ish. Guys, thanks for joining me on this deep dive for exterior insulation. This makes a huge difference on the efficiency of your house because I've got that continuous blanket on the whole outside of my house. Think about putting a ski jacket on compared to just stuffing that insulation between your ribs. That's really akin to what's going on here. And again, I really like that we've got that foil facing on the outside to give us that radiant barrier benefit. Oh, one other thing I didn't mention too, I do like that this is a relatively lightweight foam, fairly easy to handle, even four by eight sheets, guys can uh, handle it pretty easily. And also big thanks to Roden House too. I'll put a link in the description. They have a bunch of different great products to install this from cap fasteners uh, to specific blades to use uh, for both your knife and for your circular saw or table saw. Check out those guys, they make some great products for actually cutting this and installing it out in the field. Huge thanks to Atlas for sponsoring today's video. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram, otherwise we'll see you next time on The Build Show.